Hello everyone, my name is Pixelriffs and welcome back to the Hardcore Survival Guide. I hope you guys are having a good day. I'm working on the hobbit hole a little bit. I'm doing a little bit of a renovation in the interior and I wanted to start recording right now because the wandering trader showed up and I'm wondering if he has anything he can trade us that looks... Oh, if only, <laughs> if only we had had him in the last episode. He's trading both slime balls and moss blocks. I have some slime balls on me and I'm now farming moss blocks very easily. But good to know that this guy trades both of those in the event that we need them. I was hoping he would have some drip leaf because in 1.17, since lush caves aren't going to be implemented until the next update, the wandering trader is the only source of drip leaf, which is a plant you can only get in lush caves growing in damp environments with lakes and clay around and that kind of thing. So I was hoping to get hold of some of that because I haven't worked with it yet. I'm really excited to work with it at some point. But anyway, I've been farming azalea trees a little bit over here and I'm kind of of the opinion now that azalea is a better way to farm oak than oak itself is and let me explain while I trade for another diamond axe. Here we go our weaponsmith friend will sell me an unbreaking one axe and I just got 30 levels from trading so we can potentially resurrect the enchantment setup inside of the hobbit hole and re-enchant this one. Let's see now, efficiency four, unbreaking three. Perfect, perfect working axe. So here's the deal with azalea versus oak, and here is why I think azalea ends up being a superior tree. For a start, if we plant an oak sapling, the average oak sapling is gonna give us maybe four or five blocks of oak wood, and also just took five bone meal to grow. And that's obviously not an exact thing. Oak can grow very quickly. It can also grow a little bit slower. So if you're using bone meal to farm oak wood, you can probably expect to spend on average about four to five bone meal per tree, right? Whereas azalea, I have noticed, grows very quickly. If I just bone meal this a couple of times, the first one there took five bone meal to grow, the second one took only one. So I think on average I've been noticing, this may just be anecdotal, but I've been noticing azalea grows a little bit faster. Not only that, but it provides a bit more oak wood. The azalea tree's shape means that it has a branch of oak that always goes out in one direction or the other, and in my experience that tends to provide seven to eight oak wood per tree. So while I would love azalea to have its own unique wood, right now it is a better way of farming oak. It's worth taking into account that oak trees don't always grow in the same size and shape, sometimes they grow larger variants, which honestly I think a lot of people just find a pain to chop down. Those taller oak trees, like the ones that grow on plains biomes, just tend to be a bit of a mess and they're full of leaves and not a huge amount of extra oak wood, whereas I think azaleas are just a nice compact size that doesn't require you to, you know, pillar up and shear a ton of leaves to get to the rest of the oak wood. I think this is actually a pretty decent way of farming oak. Not to mention it gets you two extra lovely leaf blocks that don't change colour in different biomes and look fantastic, and it also gets you rooted dirt, which is a block I want to work with more just in terms of landscaping and stuff, so I think azalea wins out for me. Either way, it's quite nice to have when you're renovating the interior of a hobbit hole and probably using a lot of stripped oak and oak wood around here. So I'm going to tuck a bunch of this stuff in a chest for now because today we're going to go looking for an abandoned mine shaft and this is potentially a very dangerous situation to be in in a hardcore world. And it is for that reason that I'm going to return to our valuables chest which is still here in the blacksmith and I'm going to make two buckets. We're going to have one for water and the other for milk. And with the front door shut we're going to return to a cave that I found on a live stream from this world and decided to take the coordinates instead of exploring because an abandoned mine shaft was there. And I figured if we wanted to die, we want to die in a YouTube video. So down here in this cave, we should find an exit that leads out into an abandoned mine shaft. I believe it was under this area. And trust me, I know that my shield is looking low on durability right now. That's kind of why I'm trying to get these mobs to fight each other. There we go. So now I can uh, focus on gathering a little bit more iron from around here, smelt that quickly and make myself a shield. There we go, we'll keep the spare one in the inventory for now, but we've got a fresh shield all ready to go, and I guess we'll wait for the rest of this iron to finish smelting before we move on, but down here, somewhere underneath this area, we should find ourselves in the abandoned mineshaft. Well, there's a different cave entrance to it, it turns out, but there it is, very mineshaft, much abandoned. Now, I <laughs> need to get down there safely for one thing, and then I need to be on my guard for cave spiders. Having lit up the area up here, I'm going to place a bucket of water down there, which isn't going to flow towards the lava, unfortunately, because of the way this cave is generated. And just for the sake of safety, I'm going to block off this lava source, just in case I wander into that. But I'm also going to place three torches on the wall going upwards to indicate that that is our exit. And I think a column of water is fairly obvious 
obvious that way, but you never know. I've also crafted myself some shears so that we can take care of cobwebs, because cobwebs are going to get in our way a fair amount down here, and I want to keep them for future builds if we even get that far. Now, the regular mobs like creepers and so forth are going to be around here, and I'm just going to deal with them like normal. But if we encounter a cave spider spawner, I'm probably going to end up destroying it. Typically, the Minecraft community considers destroying a spawner kind of blasphemous because of its potential for use in an XP farm or a resource farm of some kind, but personally, I'm all in favor of destroying cave spider spawners. I don't tend to farm them all that much, and they are potentially... Oh, oh, nice geode location. I like that. Cave spider spawners are potentially the doom of your hardcore world because cave spiders inflict poison, and poison is not a status effect you want, getting you down to half a heart and then a skeleton's arrow finishing you off. Seriously, this is incredible. I love that geodes and abandoned mineshafts can intersect like this. It makes for such a cool atmosphere when you're exploring. And this looks like a massive geode too. Seriously, I want to excavate this or something. I want to do something with this. This is, this is absolutely awesome. And seeing the cross section of a geode in a tunnel like this is just brilliant. I just love that so much. Okay, well, we're going to continue exploring the mineshaft, and one thing I've started doing is taking out single blocks from each of the corners when you reach an intersection of wooden planks like this, because not only can you then pick up the wooden planks and, and uh, craft stuff with them, you can also see around the corners before a creeper walks out of one side tunnel and gets you. So I think a lot of the time it's going to be safest to destroy these first. The mineshaft even comes out onto the bottom level down here, and yeah, this is this is two geodes side by side. That's amazing. I'd never noticed that they could generate this close to each other. The wall of one geode basically forms the wall of another. That's wild. Okay, I'm <laughs> I'm bookmarking this location. I'm saving the coordinates for this. We have to come back and do something with this. But what I'm mainly looking for is these. Mineshaft loot chests now have the possibility, although this one did not, of containing glowberries, another one of the lush cave blocks that is missing from world generation in Minecraft 1.17 and is going to be added a little bit later. But mineshaft chests are currently the only place you can find those unless the wandering trader happens to have them, but I don't think he does. So we're going to be looking around here for abandoned mineshaft loot chests so that we can hopefully get hold of some glowberries to work with. And there we go. This is our nemesis, folks. This is what we did not want to find down here, and that is never a noise you want to hear in a hardcore world. Okay, right, we're going to drink our bucket of milk once I've gotten to safety here and the other thing to make sure we do is eat so that we can uh yeah replenish our health actually we're not doing too badly from the poison let's see if yeah okay it's not got too long we can let it wear off okay great now we don't want to get cornered near one of these cave spider spawners if there are other mobs around deal with them as swiftly as possible because of course the cave spider spawner is going to spawn more cave spiders which means more chances of getting poisoned more chances of getting hit and more chances of dying and losing the world forever so stay on your guard around cave spider spawners if you see a corridor full of webs like this only go in if you're confident you can deal with it. And right now, I am pretty confident. We're going to light up the area as we go, and the cave spider spawner is a few blocks away. Every time we hear a spider, we can potentially block this off if we want to, but cave spiders will go through a one-block tall gap, so that is a concern we're going to have to deal with, and from a distance, I'm going to break the cave spider spawner eliminating that as a threat. Now that cave spider there is going to get dealt with and hopefully that was the only one that spawned around here. Yep, there's one up there on the ceiling. We can deal with him as well. We can take a second to listen out for any more noises, but it looks like the corridor ends here. You do need to be a little bit cautious in case there is another corridor immediately aligned with this that has even more webs. If the webs just continue, chances are there's another cave spider spawner down there. But I can breathe a sigh of relief at this point. That's that threat eliminated, and we got a bit of string out of it as well. We can spend some time gathering the cobwebs here. And with that taken care of, I'm going to pass back through the geode corridor because I love this so much. <laughs> uh, right, let's move on down the mine shaft. Let's see what else we can find, and let's keep our eyes peeled for some of those loot chests. Eventually, we are going to be grabbing some of the resources I see in the walls here as well. Don't worry, I'm not bypassing all of this iron and copper and good stuff, but I honestly like to go through an abandoned mine shaft first 
first and light the entire thing up. Make sure I know the lay of the land and make sure any cave spider spawners are disabled so that when we mine into the walls, we're not turning our backs on any threats from the surrounding environment. And guys like this can't sneak up on us. Well, you can still block poisonous attacks with a shield, so if we use our shield sparingly, we don't have to worry about getting poisoned at all. But, oh boy, that's gonna be... <laughs> it's gonna be a little bit tricky to deal with that if there's another cave spider spawner around here. And cave spiders do not spawn naturally. They won't end up spawning in caves or abandoned mine shafts without a spawner being nearby. So if you're seeing cave spiders and you haven't spotted a spawner yet, keep looking because there will be one and you probably want to take care of it. In this case, it looks like it's actually been blocked off by some generation from another mine shaft. So I think we have one down here by the looks of things and I'm going to stay clear of it for the moment. But if we're lucky, it might actually have been blocked off. And that one cave spider we found may have just spawned in a dark space in an adjacent corridor. Nope, there's one there. Okay, cool. Let's back off a little bit here. Let's use our sword and shield sparingly and get into the corner, make sure there are no threats, wait for the poison to subside, and heal up. Haven't needed to use the bucket of milk yet, which is good. Poison has worn off, and we can block it up here. Okay, right, there's the spawner. Good. We can break that now, and we can deal with the rest of these guys using a bow. There we go, we got one. I don't know if there's gonna be any more, but I'm just gonna start breaking cobwebs and making sure that our paths are clear up here. Now, I'm still hearing a few spider noises around here, which may be cave spiders or maybe regular ones, but I think we're in the clear for the moment. We've destroyed two spawners, which means two fewer chances of cave spiders ambushing us, and there's a lot of zombies around in these neighboring caves, but those seem to lead away from the mineshaft, and we are here for the loot. I can hear a bunch of spiders somewhere nearby, which means potentially that we're above or below another spawner. I'm gonna to have to play this a little bit carefully. Yeah, that leads down. I'm expecting that's going to lead us to another cave spider spawner. So I'm gonna have sword, bow, and shield at the ready and dig our way down here. Okay, we have another cave spider situation. Let's wait for it to attack us. Have the shield up, no harm done. Very good. There are a couple of zombies around here, it sounds like, and I'm seeing a few more clusters of webs that make me wonder if there's another cave spider spawner around here. I think I saw one drop down from this direction, but I'm gonna try and play it a little bit safe here and back off to a location that I know what I'm doing. Another useful tip in mineshafts is to take advantage of the fact that mobs AI doesn't want to take them walking over rails. That's really a quality of life thing to make sure mobs don't walk on your minecart rails while you've got a long minecart set up, but in this case, Abandoned mineshafts generating rails in them means that mobs like this won't walk over them, so you can keep them at range if you need to. I am still hearing a ton of spider noises from around here though, which means potentially we have another cave spider spawner, or even a regular spider spawner, encased in stone somewhere around here, and I am kind of hesitant to let it out. Occasionally, of course, the spider noises you hear may just be regular spiders that have spawned in here, because that still happens, but honestly, you don't want to risk it. And yep, I think we found it. I think we have found... The worst thing that could possibly happen down here, there is practically a nest of cave spiders down there. Not only that, but the water around here is making it a little bit difficult to maneuver, and the best way to get rid of that is going to be to block our exit a little bit. <laughs> so, yeah, there's an enderman down here as well, and I really don't know if I want to deal with aggroing him. Dealing with such a hard-hitting enemy whilst there are cave spiders around is not my idea of a good time, but hopefully he should warp away fairly soon and we can assess the situation here. Take care of that guy up by the ceiling and I don't know, if, I don't think it's down there. I, yep, it's round this corner. This is the one I've been hearing probably this entire time. We can light that up, break our way through to the spawner, break that and no more should spawn. So now we can back off and deal with anything that comes out of this tunnel at our own pace. Gonna have to be very careful around here though because the last thing I want is to deal with an enderman and some cave spiders. So let's break our way through this a little bit. It looks like a lot of them are stuck up by the ceiling right now. So let's keep them there and try and take them out with a bow. Bam, that's one. The bow is probably my best weapon right now because it keeps them at range and also my sword only has sharpness three. I kind of want to deal with these as quickly as possible. There might be some that have spawned in adjacent corridors as well because dark enough spaces will 
allow for that. And is this a double spawner? Nope, looks like that was just a long corridor full of cobwebs and I can still hear a couple of spiders nearby. So sounds like there's just an adjacent dark corridor that we need to deal with. Anyway, pretty good effort. We managed to not get too badly poisoned and hopefully the cave spider threat is at least dealt with for the moment. Always so much more relaxing when you don't have to deal with the cave spiders. And wow, look at this. The abandoned mine shaft juts out into a ravine and over here you can see, oh, there's a witch over there. That's another chance of getting poisoned. You can see the new mineshaft generation where chains will now support these areas of raised walkway when it opens out into a large space like this. And you'll also find wooden log pillars supporting the entire structure from below. So that's really cool to see that generating in a ravine. And if you're short on wood down here, find some of these pillars so you can gather some logs. Just destroyed another cave spider spawner that was up here on this raised walkway. There is a creeper around the corner right here that I'm trying to deal with before he deals with me. Still no more loot chests though, so I'm having a bit of a hard time finding any of the glow berries today, but at least we got to explore this and there's a couple of really fascinating bits of terrain generation in here that I hope we can come back to at some point. Yeah, we're seeing some really cool bits of mineshaft generation even because of how these two mineshafts seem to have overlapped. Like sections like this where there are fences in these wooden pillars just never happens. So it's very cool to see that. And as I'm exploring now, I'm becoming aware that my food is getting dangerously low. I've only got a couple of pieces of food left and it would be the worst thing in the world to die down here because of starvation. But we also need to make sure that we can still regenerate health and everything. So I'm going to push my luck a little bit further. We're going to keep exploring to try and find another loot chest. But if that one doesn't have any glow berries or if we don't find a loot chest, in the next like five minutes or so i think we're probably going to head home cut our losses and see if we can explore another mine shaft that might have stuff this one does have some dripstone though and it might be worth gathering some of this right now let's see what i can throw out of my inventory got an infinity bow we don't need the arrows and let's throw some diorite and other decorative stone out of here if we can got some rotten flesh we don't really need got some spider eyes we don't really need right now let's gather some of the dripstone from the edge of this ravine and i think that's where i will leave it for now but the ravine is very, very cool. I'd like to come back to this and see if we can get some more resources from further down in the depths. Dealing with the occasional baby zombie down here as well, but they're not too much of a problem. All right, here's our shot at an abandoned mineshaft chest. This one is actually hovering on a piece of suspended rail. So if this one doesn't contain glow berries, then... Oh, sad times. Okay, I think we're probably going to have to head home soon. Although it did just give me a bit more bread. So, mm, I don't know. Maybe we push our luck a little further. But I do love the fact that that's floating. That's very funny. And weirdly enough, we've come full circle on this section of the mineshaft. There's a lovely axolotl swimming in the water. And we'll, we'll talk more about those guys in a future episode. In the meantime... I'm thinking we keep an eye on this and we go just a little bit further into the mineshaft area because there's a big dirt room down here and hopefully from here we can find our way to something special. And around the corner, our friend the axolotl has led us to something awesome. Hey bud, uh, let's get you in the water then, shall we? Oh, even better, let's scoop you up in a bucket so you don't end up dying. That's a, a better idea, I think. We've got an axolotl to take home with us and that leads directly back to the geodes that we found earlier. That's awesome. We'll have to deal with that a little bit later. I see some purple particles down there, so I'm slightly worried about the enderman at the end of that corridor but for now oh still no glow berries unfortunate but at least we got hold of another golden apple that's going to be nice to have that enderman's purple particles suit the geode vibe really really well and i'm kind of preparing to dig into the wall just in case we accidentally look at that enderman but i'm also hearing a lot of zombies around here so slightly worried about what's just about to find us speaking of things that are about to find us down by that creeper we have another there we go, another set of webs which is going to lead to another cave spider spawner. So we've got to play it very, very safe here. I think there are tunnels to either side which I might block off temporarily to make sure that nothing can sneak up on us or down on us as the case might be. And there we go, the cave spider comes in with the attack. We're going to have to back off a little bit here to make sure we can get rid of the poison. And now we're back in bread eating territory, I guess. Well, let's start to light up this corridor just so we don't end up getting ambushed by any more cave spiders. Let's light the spawner. I don't hear any more spider noises, and of course the skeletons are coming around the corner to get me. Man, I've now lost track of the amount of cave spider spawners we have broken, and it managed to spawn just one more before I could destroy the spawner for good, and of course I get poisoned, but 
Hopefully we should be fine here. And it looks like all that might have been worth it because just around the corner we have an abandoned mineshaft chest and finally we get our glow berries. Well, of course, I'm going to try and secure the area here first before I do any more loot sorting because I, I hear a few more mobs around and I want to make sure I'm not going to get ambushed by anything I don't want. But I think we can leave some of this other stuff in here in favor of taking those glow berries with us. That's really what I wanted to get from this mineshaft adventure. So thank goodness that we found what we were looking for the whole time. We'll take the bread, we'll take this Riptide 1 book as well because it's loot after all, and we can get cobblestone from anywhere. So maybe I'll consider bringing the melon seeds until we luck into finding a jungle a little bit later. And with that, I am leaving the mineshaft. I think we have pushed our luck quite far enough. There are endermen around here and I honestly don't want to look at one of those and risk getting hit by one. So following the torches I've placed that lead us back to the entrance, there we go, we come full circle and we are right back where we started. We can climb up this water source and head back to the village where we can take stock of everything we've got here in the mineshaft. And it looks like the sun is setting right now, so this seems like an ideal time to run back to the hobbit hole and get some sleep. Well, good morning, everyone. Excuse me while I replace my front door. Still haven't quite figured that out yet, but I'll probably tinker with it a little bit more later and thankfully it looks like the abandoned mineshaft hasn't taken us underneath the village too much because if it had i feel like half my villagers would be zombies by now so it looks like we made a pretty successful run through the abandoned mineshaft now before we wrap up today's episode let's take a quick look at what we can do with glow berries which is pretty simple really glow berries are a food source kind of like sweet berries that you find in tiger biomes but they're really not all that worth eating they don't restore a great deal of hunger and don't worry yeah I just ate one but we have plenty more that we can use now if you attach them to the underside of any solid block it will plant a cave vine and the cave vines are kind of like regular vines in that you can't bone meal them in order to grow them instead what you get when you bone meal them is glow berries growing right there on the vine and if we right click that one more time the glow berry pops off and we get to pick it up so naturally if you stand here and spam bone meal underneath one of these things you'll end up farming glow berries pretty quickly see now we have eight so just finding one small small bunch in an abandoned mineshaft chest will allow you to farm them permanently. Much like other types of vines, these vines will naturally grow as well, but you can grow them artificially if you want to by placing another glow berry attached to the underside of the vine block, and that can allow you to play with them a little bit aesthetically if you want to. If we press the F3 button, you'll see that on the right hand side underneath Minecraft cave underscore vines, it says age five. And this is an age mechanic that works similarly to how kelp works, where if you have a vine which has the age of 25, it no longer grows. Each time it grows a block, that age number increases on the tip of the plant. And if you have a plant that has reached age 25, it will no longer grow. But the number is randomized when you place the plant and when you break the plant. So if I break this cave vine here, you'll notice the age of that one is now 22. So it could only grow for three more blocks before it reached the point where it couldn't grow any further, even if there were no blocks underneath it like there are here. As cave vines grow, they will naturally produce glow berries, and glow berries, as the name suggests, are also a light source. So if I wander on in here and take the torches off the walls for a second, we can plant some cave vines up here, we can have them hang down a little bit, and then if we bone meal them, like so, you'll see that lights up the environment around here a little bit. It's also interesting that the tip of the plant can grow fewer berries because it's a smaller portion of the plant, so technically speaking, that is not as useful a light source as this. Berries which grow further up the plant provide a higher light level than the ones on the tip of the plant, making it possible to kind of vary how well lit the environment around them is. But I think the best part about glow berries in general is that they're such a cool hanging vine. They have quite a 3D feel to them. They're quite dense in terms of the leaves and stuff that are in the vine texture. So I find them really nice for building lush environments with. And I think what I want to do is hang a couple of them underneath the eaves of our hobbit hole. So if I just place one over there and maybe we'll tuck one up in here as well, and maybe we'll grow one just above the doorway. And those are going to naturally grow over time, but we can also also monitor the age of them a little bit and see if we want to maybe grow one that's a little bit shorter. You could also place string underneath some of these if you wanted them to stop aging at a certain point, but there we go, that one's reached age 21, so it's probably going to grow down in front of the door a little bit. If we only wanted it to grow three blocks, you just got to keep breaking and placing glow berries here until it reaches age 23 or 24, and then it'll hang down nicely in front of the door frame here. Yeah, looking at it now, maybe I don't like that quite so much, but either way, <laughs> we now have the option to farm glow berries using 
using bone meals so we can use them wherever we want to and i think that's been a pretty successful episode of the hardcore survival guide thank you so much for watching this episode i hope you enjoyed it my name has been pixel Rift. please don't forget to leave a like on this video if you enjoyed it subscribe if you want to see more and i'll see you guys soon take care bye for now